Nook. I'm Christine Lee, and today we're having some awesome, awesome food, some of my favorites, and we're going to talk to you also about where we're gearing as far as names of the show go. It'll be my cooking of presents, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So let me show you where we are. We're going to do the dessert right away because that's got to get in the oven. And then I've already got my water boiling and we'll talk about that in a minute. But here's what's on the menu today. We're doing meatloaf sliders, we're doing homemade macaroni and cheese, and we're doing corn on the cob. Sound great? Mm-mm. You know, does. spring and summer are coming and so these are the kinds of meals that are quick and easy and delicious. Alright, so let's get our dessert going. So I am starting with a yellow cake mix, just a plain yellow cake mix. Okay, let me get that out of there. And then today is the two item cake, okay? So we are going to take some cream soda. So this is going to be a super vanilla tasting cake. We're gonna do 12 ounces of soda, so a can and a half. This is a little eight ounce can. So we're gonna do a can and a half of cream soda. As far as the the ingredients for the cake, that's all we are going to need. Okay, and then like I said, I'll just put one can in. I'm putting a half a can. There you go. A little bit more. Half a can. We'll save that and drink that later. And then just you're just going to take a whisk. You don't need your, you know, your mixer, your electric mixer or anything for this. And you're just gonna mix it up, mix it up, mix it up, and it makes it very frothy, which makes for a very fluffy, kind of almost a an angel food texture kind of a cake. Okay, Chris, you can get in here and see oh, this. Yeah. It's just pretty frothy. Make sure you get all of the cake moist, okay, with the cream soda. I've already um, greased and floured the pan, so that's ready to go. There's not much prep work for today. I didn't really have to slice things or anything like that. So as far as prepping goes, it was a pretty easy day. Okay. Put that in the sink. I am going to scoop this out in my baking pan, my little cake pan over here. Okay, make sure you get it all out. You don't want to waste any delicious cake mix. Okay, there we go. And we're going to spread this out and then we're going to put it in the oven and I'm going to put it on for, I'm going to check it at 25 minutes because this is a larger pan and the cake is going to be a little bit thinner, okay? So we're going to watch it. So look at that, ready to go into the oven. Here we go. All right. Middle shelf, I got it on 350 and we're just going to let it cook. I'm going to mark 25 minutes on here. Okay, and that's gone. Now, in here, I just have salted boiling water because I'm going to make my macaroni and cheese in this pot, one pot, that's all you're going to need for this. I've got a pound of uh, large elbow macaroni, okay? And then I've got a half a cube, you know, the big giant Velveeta cubes? Well, this is a half, and I'm actually using the 2% cheese, okay? As much as I love cheese and the flavor, I do the 2% plus calories, a little maybe less salt kind of a thing right there. And then I've got milk and I've got a stick of butter. That's all you're going to need for the macaroni and cheese. And then right here, boiling, I have, um, okay, so when I make corn on the cob, I want to have several different tastes in the corn. So I have, in the water, I have a half a cup of butter and I have uh, about a quarter of a cup of sugar and then I salted it with probably maybe two tablespoons of salt. That's what's in here, that's what's boiling. Now we don't have to put the corn in, I'm gonna turn that down because we don't have to put the corn in, it, it's very quick, so we'll do that in, in a little while. In the meantime, I am going to start my pasta because I wanna get the macaroni and cheese going. So in goes a pound of pasta and stir it around. Here we go. And that's, that's going to take. Are you watching with us right now? Hello, thank you for joining us. Okay, stir it around. You know what? When you make pasta, here's a little tip in the kitchen. When you make pasta, stir it for the first minute, first 60 seconds that it's in the pot. <clears throat> stir it around because it really helps it not all clump together. 
And I don't know who out there is old enough to remember Graham Kerr, but he had a cooking show. He was a guy from England, and he had a great cooking show when I was a young kid. My mom watched him all the time. And that was one of Graham Kerr's, as, as young as I was, I remember, that he said, stir your pasta the first minute that it's in there because then it's not going to all clump together. It's a great tip in the kitchen. Okay, we're going to let the pasta cook. We're going to have seven minutes on the clock. Okay, we're going to leave this. And right now what we're going to do is this. Okay, so sliders. Sliders are not usually meatloaf, okay? But I like to do a little bit more with meat because, you know, I can only eat ground turkey and chicken and turkey and I have a very limited diet, so I try to be more creative with the food that I have. So I'm going to take my ground turkey and I'm going to prepare it as if I were making a meatloaf, okay? Just to keep it more interesting and it's really delicious. And the thing is with meatloaf, because everything in my kitchen is fast, easy, and delicious fed up, um, I, I want the taste of meatloaf, but I don't have the time to cook it, okay? So I combine the two and I make meatloaf sliders. They're going to cook fast and they're going to taste just like little baby miniature meatloaves. And they're delicious. They are delicious. They are delicious. Let me throw this away because you guys know that I always say, clean, clean as, as you, you go. go. My little box over here, clean as you go. You don't want to have to worry about cleaning a big messy kitchen after you cooked and sat down and ate. You don't want to do that. Now I'm going to put this bowl in here in a minute, but first I'm going to drain my pasta. So, all right. So let's get to making my meatloaf mixture right now. Okay. So when I make meatloaf, everybody has their own meatloaf recipe. I mean, that, that's kind of one of those things where you can do right now, however you prepare meatloaf, do it. Okay, what I do is I put about a good cup and a half, that's a lot of breadcrumbs, but you, what's nice about this is you can spread this out and feed a lot of people. So I put about a cup and a half of um, Italian style breadcrumbs, that's my favorite. I use low sodium garlic salt, okay, and I use the California blend, I'm probably going to put uh, you know, you gotta, you got to give some flavor to this, so maybe a tablespoon, a good tablespoon of the garlic salt. I'm also going to add some parsley. I like the look, as you can see, it just gives it a little color, and it just makes it so pretty, <laughs> and I like that. You know, you gotta, you got to dress up your food, why not? Okay, there's my parsley, that might have been a teaspoon or so. Watching, she says hello. Hello, hello, hello. Is that my daughter, Ashley? Yes. Hello, mm -hmm. daughter, Ashley. Okay, <clears throat> and in here, okay, I'm going to add one egg. It's if you were making two pounds of meat, you'd use two eggs, so a pound per an egg per pound. Okay, and I'm going to put my egg in there. Okay, throw it away. Fran's also with us. Hello, mother. How are you? Okay, and now I'm going to just add some water. Now, here's the thing with this. This is easy because I start out with maybe a half a cup of water and I'm going to mix it all up. Now, if it's too loose, I add more breadcrumb. If it's too thick, I add more water. Very simple. Okay? Now, the other day I came across this thing because I like to, as I do the show, I like to give you guys some hints in the kitchen and things to really help you out. For those of you out there that are gluten-free, that you need a gluten-free diet, and you want to make a meatloaf and you can't do the bread and the you know the breadcrumbs and stuff like that so i saw this thing i said great you take rice chex cereal and i mean you could even use the, the generic brand of rice cereal okay and you take a big ziploc and you put a whole bunch in there and then you use a rolling pin or even a can of soup or something and you just crush all of the um the cereal that is a great breadcrumb you could either use that in something like this your meatloaf or you can um bread things your favorite chicken or your uh, pork chop or whatever you want to do that you normally bread you can use that and it comes out like a like a thicker like a panko so it's a great tip and for those of you out there who are gluten-free 
might be an alternative for it you. Would make a, it crust. would make a good binder, I'm right. sure. It yeah. makes a great binder, and it's healthier, and uh, you don't have to worry about all the gluten stuff that's making your stomach sick or whatever your issues are. This is actually a perfect mix of everything, okay? I'm going to wash my hands here. First, I'm going to take out my my strainer. My macaroni should be almost done. The macaroni is only going to take about eight minutes, okay? Always wash your hands when you've worked with raw meat. I don't care what kind of raw meat it is. Wash your hands before you touch the rest of the meal, okay? Let's see. We've got about two minutes on the pasta. Let me stir it up. That's looking great. And thanks to Graham Kerr, I don't have any pasta sticking together. <laughs> and I usually don't. I have literally used that little tip forever in my kitchen, and it absolutely works. Keep that one in mind, okay? That's almost done. Okay, so I'm going to get my fryer started here. Today's meal, guys, except for the dessert, is going to be very, very, very quick, okay? Very quick and very easy. So while I am getting my pan heated up here um i wanted to tell you about what i well elizabeth we can i'll talk about what you did the other night elizabeth was making i think it was pulled pork by the way that's my daughter elizabeth back there yeah, let's She's say hi to the, elizabeth the, the calls Hello. and the comments Hello. today thank you dear um <laughs> elizabeth was making i believe it was a pulled pork yes um dinner mm -hmm. and when she realized which happens to all of us how do I do pulled pork without like the barbecue stuff or however she normally makes it? So she called me up and she said, Mom, she said, I have this pork dish and I have no barbecue sauce. And I said, do you have ketchup? And she said, yep. I said, do you have mustard? Yep. Do you have brown sugar? Yep. You got barbecue sauce. So I'm going to talk to you about that in a little while because actually if you look right over here, I've got some homemade three item quick delicious barbecue sauce. For our, for our it sliders went over today. Very well. Tasty. And it went over very well. See? Okay. We have Michelle Jewel watching with us. Hello, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Thanks for joining us today. You know, you just kind of have to impro improvise in the kitchen. Okay, so I just, I have my canola oil in my handy dandy little mm. squirter. What do you call that? This. That. Squirter. A squirter. <laughs> <laughs> for today, it's going to be a squirter. Okay? Okay, you know what? I'm going to strain the pasta while that's heating up, while my oil is heating up, because really, it's done. Now, um, I'm going to let the pasta sit right there. I'm going to shut the burner off for a few minutes, and then I will come back to it to make the cheese sauce. But right now, if you look right there, Chris, you can see that my pasta is cooked. I'm going to get these out of there. There you go. Mm. It's ready to go, and we will be cooking that in just a minute. Now, I want the sliders to be all about the same size, so I got my little handy dandy scoop, okay? And ground turkey is always a little stickier than ground beef, but I'm so used to working with it, <laughs> I don't even think about it anymore. And so all I'm doing is, these are probably uh, pound wise, gosh, I don't even know how much these would be. Maybe quarter pound, maybe sliders. They're going to be a nice thick little slider, okay? And of course, the slider is just a tiny little burger, okay? I think a lot of the maybe the bars started that where you can do like a bar and grill kind of a thing, and you know they they did these um, specials in bars where if you come in like at four o'clock or early dinner, um, you might not be ready for a full dinner. And so they offered, a lot of the places offered these little burgers, and man, they went over like crazy. And so they just, the sliders just caught on. And Jennifer so Hammond is place. with us. Hello, Jennifer Hammond, how are you, girl? Hey, Jennifer. Thank you for joining me today in my kitchen here in Branson, Missouri. Okay, Chris, are you seeing these beautiful sliders over here? Yep, coming together nicely. Yes, they are. They, they're smelling great. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, they are going to taste great. Remember that my whole 
the whole reason for doing this show, I'm going to say this every week, this is our seventh episode, which I'm very excited about. We have had an amazing response. It seems that every single week our numbers go up, um, which is very, very exciting. And um, I'm going to let those cook right there. I'm going to take this to this side because I don't want my meat hands to be anywhere near my pasta. Um, the numbers are going up every single week that we do the show. So we're very excited about that. And I, and I know that a lot of it has to do with people telling other people you have to watch the show. We're, so we're very, very excited about it. And we want to thank all of you yes, we do. For, for doing that and telling people. We want you to go to um, YouTube. You can watch this afterwards on Facebook. But we want you to go to YouTube and like us and subscribe because that means you'll be part of what we're doing and we are very excited about this. But the whole purpose of the show is that because I've had uh, Meniere's disease for so many years, since 1983 I've been diagnosed. And um, you know, life changes. When you have an illness, as the illness progresses, you have to make a lot of changes and accommodations I call it navigating through the disease. And look at those. Man, They're that beautiful. smells good. They are beautiful. Hello, Teresa. Watching this Hello, also. Teresa. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. We have sliders and mac and cheese and corn on the cob. I'm actually going to, while these are cooking a little bit through, I'm going to start putting <clears> the corn in. They really won't take very long. But why not? We'll just stick them in there. Then we won't have to worry about them. I've got eight little kernels of corn, not kernels, <laughs> corn on the cobs. <laughs> Eight little kernels. Can you imagine how cute you have to You'd have to pull it up. Anyway, so through my disease, um, I've had to make a lot of changes in my life and how I do things. I've always loved to cook. My sister and I own restaurants. I, I have a degree in culinary. So I've always, cooking has always been a part of my life, my family's life, my mom was a great, is a great cook. Um, she's 80 and still cooks. My grandmother, her mom, was a great cook. And so there's a lot of good cooks. My sister's a chef. We own a restaurant. We, ho we own two restaurants, actually, in Arizona. And so it's always been part of the family. So when I started to see that on the Meniere's support group website, that people had a lot of questions about what do I do? You know, some people don't don't have the stamina. It's a it's a very horrible disease that, like today, I'm very very super wobbly and it is a lot to it. But it, it really limits my time in the kitchen. I'm gonna take this. Look at that. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. Melissa so Stats says that all looks good. Oh, it is, and they're so good, and they're so easy, and they're so quick, and so. Why not do this at home, guys? And you know, you're killing two birds with one stone. You love meatloaf, you want meatloaf, but you don't want to wait for the meatloaf to cook. Haha, <laughs> here it is. Your meatloaf, little little sliders, little patties, okay? So anyway, the Meniere's people, they ask a lot about food. You know, some people newly diagnosed, they're, it's a confusing disease. You really don't know what to do. You're a little scared about what your future holds. And so, I thought, you know what, I'm going to take what I know and I'm going to make a cooking show that would help. Now, the biggest thing is this, fast, easy, and delicious, fed up, okay? So my, my motto is like, uh, don't be fed up, come to fed up. And we'll help you, you know, fix things in the kitchen and make it quicker. Um, but the other thing was we have to, we can't have a lot of salt. Sodium is a big, big deterrent for us because... I'm going to put a little bit more oil because um, it, salt retains water and there's a lot of people that can't have salt. They have to have low sodium diet. So not only for Meniere's people, for, but for anybody who has to keep their sodium low, I cook low sodium, okay? And so uh, I thought it might be very helpful. Well, we've had a lot of people watching from all over the world. I mean, as far as the UK, people have been watching the show and making a lot of great comments and we're very excited and we're very pleased that this is happening. So that's why we're doing the show, okay? So I'm hoping that it's helping some of you out there. My mom said, 
it's not just for people that are, you know, disabled and, and I say, she said it's more for people that are unable and need to change things in the kitchen, like herself, who's 80 now, who really has to get in and out of the kitchen. <clears throat> last week my sister was here and she helped me out with, with the camera last week and she talked about, you know, she, of course, I've known her all my life, and we used to work together in the restaurants. We used to work together at Harris Casino in the kitchen over there. And um, you, you, you learned, I learned a lot. I really did, learning to, to cook bulk for people. But my sister said that, that I have a way of, if, if somebody out there has a recipe that they love, but it just takes too long, too much prep or too much whatever, and you don't have the time or the energy that I would be the one to write in to me and say, how do I do my recipe quickly? And I can pretty much, just about any recipe you've got, I can condense it and make it 30 to 40 minutes in the kitchen for you. That's what I do. Okay, I've got the last of my sliders, so I've got, we'll see, two, four, Six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifteen sliders out of one pound of meat. That's pretty darn good. Wow, look at that, guys. So we had uh, Jeff on here watching and then Aunt Heroin. Well, hello, ladies. Thank you for joining us today for our meatloaf sliders, macaroni and cheese. Now, I can't take credit for the macaroni and cheese, okay? So, Jessica Sears. You're in Arizona, and when, when we'd have potlucks and things like that, Jessica would always make this delicious macaroni and cheese. And it's so good, it's one of those recipes that you assume took her like a long time to make. Wrong. So I said to her one time, Jessica, and it's so, it's so delicious. Jessica, what do you, how do you make your macaroni and cheese? It's so easy. So she actually sent me her recipe. And when she sent me her recipe, it had three ingredients. Three ingredients. I said, you've got to be kidding me. She said, no. So all it is is a half of the big cubes of Velveeta cheese. I use the 2%. That's a nice choice now. They don't, didn't always have a choice. But they have, this is the 2%, and I cut it in half, and I cut it into, I diced it, big, big cubes, okay? And then I need one full stick of butter, okay and some milk and the milk is just there's no real measurement until I get in there and I start seeing the consistency that I want so I probably got a cup and a half of milk here for me to mix it in it's so easy Jessica and is on with us and she I says oh that. I love that recipe I, I don't blame you girl <laughs> I told you I was gonna do it because it's such a good recipe and I love it, and I appreciate you letting me have it. Nice. I'm glad you shared your recipe with me because I love it, and we've eaten it a lot. And, and what happens with, when you buy this stuff for the recipe is that now you've got a, a half a cube of the cheese, so you can make it again <laughs> in a few days. So, okay, so guys, look, here's my macaroni. Okay, that's all done. I've got my corn in here. They're cooking nicely. In my remember, I've got salted water with sugar and butter in because I, those are the flavors that I like in corn on the cob, okay? And I like to boil my corn on the cob. Some people actually roast it. You can put it on a grill. You can, I mean, you can do whatever you want. But this is the quick and easy way of doing things, okay? Quick and easy. It's fast, easy, delicious, fed up. Okay, that's where our name came from. Jessica said, thanks for the shout out, love you guys. I love you too, Jessica, and I really, really appreciate you sharing. I honestly do. And that goes for anybody out there. If you have a recipe that's one, two, three, I mean, a recipe could be one item, I guess. You can say, uh, buy a bag of salad. <clears throat> you know, you just have to have one recipe, dump it in a bag. But if you have recipes, two, three, four ingredients, and they, they really are pretty quick and they expedite things in the kitchen, we would love to do it on the show, and we would give you credit for your recipe, okay? I try not to steal recipes. It's not very nice. I want, to, I want you to be acknowledged for, for this being your recipe, and this one today, over there, the meatloaf sliders are mine. 
but the macaroni and cheese, that's Jessica. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to wait for the last three sliders to cook. See how quick this is going? And then I have a whole bunch of my favorite blend of shredded cheese. It's Colby Jack, and it's Colby and Monterey Jack cheeses, okay? Favorite blend, I like the, I like the there's like, the, the Colby is much more um, like a pungent taste. And then you've got the Monterey Jack, which is almost like a mozzarella, and, and it, they just kind of, they complement each other very well. My favorite blend of cheese. And we go through the big bags of cheese every three to four days. Trust me. Okay, let's see, how are we doing? Once I get the sliders done, I'm gonna put them back in here. I'm gonna put the pan on low, okay? I'm gonna put all the, I'm gonna put them in right now. These are ready. So I'm gonna put all my, all my little meatloaf sliders back in here, okay? Just like that. Can everybody see that out there? Okay, I'm gonna turn this down, okay? Now here's a little trick because they're gonna sit in there for a little bit. I am going to put, a little drop of water in the bottom of the pan. First, I'm going to put my cheese on all of them. Look at that! Ooh. Okay, cheese, cheese, cheese. There's no such thing as too much cheese. No such thing. Not in this house. Okay. Okay. Look how beautiful that looks, guys. Perfect. Beautiful. Can you see that, Chris? We can, no, and is. it is. Awesome looking. Okay, I so I'm going to take... attest to the deliciousness. Well, you've had these, so you know how <laughs> good they are. I'm going to take a quarter of a cup of water, and I'm going to pour it in the bottom of my pan. I'm going to roll it around like that, and then I need my lid. I'll find my lid with that, but I'm just going to let that steam. Okay, I'm going to let it steam. Oh, I know where my lid is. It's over here. I'm going to grab that. You don't have to follow me over That's okay. We're just going to take a good look at these sliders here. So I'm going to mm -hmm. let those steam and make sure it's all cooked through. You don't want to eat uncooked ground turkey. Not good for you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to roll this around. This is good. This is the corn on the one. cob there. Let's take a look down in that. Well, you can't Let's really see. see. You can't just really see them, but I can pick one up there. for you. They're down <clears> here. <throat> There you go. Yep, looking and they're looking good. great. They're looking great. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my macaroni right here because it's drained. I'm going to take the same pot that we use and I'm going to make my sauce. Okay, hey, let's take a peek at the cake. Hey, let's do it. Hey, that's looking beautiful. We've only got about like two more minutes on the cake and then we'll feel it and see if it's how it's doing in there. Okay, so I'm going to put this on probably a, bit, a high, medium high, about an eight, okay, on the dial. And I'm gonna actually start with, um, I'm gonna do the, the, the stick of cheese, uh, stick of butter, not the stick of cheese, the stick of butter, okay? And I will tell you, I'm, I'm always part, we all have our own things in the kitchen, brands in the kitchen that we like, and I, I love, there's two kinds of cheeses that, uh, two kinds of butter that have a really, really good flavor. When I do all of my holiday cooking, I use, the blue bonnet sticks, they're so good, okay? They're so, so good. They have a great flavor. Um, and I you, I don't really stray from this. The sticks of butter, I use the blue bonnet. If I'm using a tub of butter at the house, I either use the blue bonnet or I use country crock because they also have great flavors, okay? So, and we all, like I said, we all have our favorites. My mom, Mima, just bought this, um, what did she call it? An Irish butter of some sort mm -hmm. um, and she said oh my gosh it's so delicious it's very creamy mom if you're out there tell me tell me what kind of butter I think it's Kerrygold what is it called? Kerrygold Kerrygold there's our little dingy ding ding for the cake <laughs> but I'm going to let it sit in there for about four more minutes I think because it's just about done this is just about done okay my butter is melting you can come see this Chris that's all I'm going to do. Melt the butter. Melt the butter. Fran is with us and she says she loves your shirt. Oh, thank you. Sassy. <laughs> I was right? going to say, sassy. <laughs> sassy. <laughs> I also have my favorite places to shop. Um, and one of those places is Rue 21 right here. Okay. So the butter is just about 
have, I want to, I want it to completely melt before I put my, my cheese in there. Let's just about it out. Turn it down because you want, now with the, with the cheese going in, you don't want anything to burn. So I'm going to turn that down. Okay. All right. Let's put the cheese in there. There goes our Velveeta. I have the 2% Velveeta cheese. And maybe it does have to come just a little bit. Okay. And we're going to let that melt. Okay. Just going to let it melt. Keep moving it around. You don't want anything to burn. Okay. Now, does that mean I don't like the burnt taste of cheese? Ooh, I love it. As a matter of fact, my new favorite snack is um, they have Cheez-Its, but it's extra toasty. And they taste like the burnt cheese around a grilled cheese or something. Mm -mm -mm. Extra toasty means extra tasty. Extra tasty. <laughs> but I love that burnt cheese taste and those darn crackers. <laughs> They're so, so good that I'm liking them way too much. And I just discovered those probably, I don't know, less than a month ago. Somebody had them. Who had them? Oh, you got to try the, whoever it was. And so I, I bought a box, and I loved it, and now I'm on, I think, box number three. Okay, look at this. Look how nice this is coming out here. Look at this. Mm -hmm. See there? Now I'm going to turn it down. Nice it's, golden color. It's doing its job just fine. Just fine. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, <clears throat> it's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to let that, I turned it down. I'm going to kind of let that melt a minute because I'm going to put a little bit of water through my noodles to get them broken up again. Okay, it only takes a second to do that. And then we're going to put the noodles in there. You know when noodles sit, they kind of gather together. They become a bunch. Like a bunch of grapes. <laughs> okay, that's all I needed to do. I'm going to let that sit there a second. And they're ready to go. How are you coming along here, sliders? <clears throat> Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Got the little slider buns. Chris got those for me this morning. Look at this. Oh my gosh, guys and girls. That is beautiful. B E A U T full. Okay. Now, it's a pretty thick cheese sauce, so we are going to add a little milk. Okay, cheese is almost completely melted. Can you get in here and see mm -hmm. that, Chris? Yep. Okay, just stay in there while this is completely melting. I want to know how everybody's doing out there today. Let us know what you're thinking. If you're enjoying the show, what you'd like to see, anything like that. We would appreciate your feedback. And what, I'll, what I'd like to say, too, is you were discussing earlier, you know, how you ended up going into this show because of your Meniere's disease. Right. And for those of you who are not Meniere's sufferers right. and maybe have not heard of Meniere's oh. disease, I encourage you to Google it, look it up, read about it, and just be aware of the disease. There is research always you know, going on and there are places that you can go to find out more, but it's a disease that <clears throat> Not many people do know a lot about. Have and heard about. Most people have never heard. Yep, yeah, never, never heard of it. And it's kind of one of those invisible diseases that really can be very debilitating, and people just aren't aware of it. So I would encourage you to learn more about it, and it, don't be surprised if you find out as you as you do read and talk to people about what you learn that you have friends and family maybe that are suffering with symptoms and have maybe not yet been diagnosed and and you'll be up to date on what's going on with them and how you can help them live their lives there's um there's really there's, there's i mean they do research on manure all the time but to this point now i've had it i was diagnosed in 1983 i had it already a couple of years except i didn't know what was going on 
And so, hey, look at this while I'm talking to you. Look at this. It's beautiful. Jessica, yeah. how am I doing, girl? Looks amazing. It does look amazing. <clears throat> Jessica said I never heard of it till I met you. Well, most people haven't. They've not heard of it. And so the thing is that um, it's a very, it's an extremely debilitating disease. Extremely. Not, not very or maybe or sort of. It's extremely debilitating. And a lot of people don't know about it. And even though they are doing research on it all the time, there's no cure. There's no medicine. There's really not a whole lot. There are some procedures that people are doing that they're hoping, you know, maybe give them some relief. But um, to this point, there's really nothing. Okay, I just want to show you this. Look at how beautiful that mm -hmm. is. That is gorgeous. Now, you know me with cheese, right? So what she I'm going to do. You're doing amazing, makes me want to make it now. Go ahead, Jessica. You know how easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I had some cheese left over from the, from the sliders. So there you go. And I'm going to let that sit and just be ready for us in a couple of minutes. Now, I'm going to get the cake out of the oven because I think it's done. Anyway, the research is going on. I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, Huey Lewis, he's a pop star. This is ready. Oh, I'm so excited. It's ready. Look at that. It's that looks beautiful. wonderful. It is a beautiful cake. Wonderful. Look at that. Now, I'm going to let this cool a few minutes because I'm going to, right before I have some of it over there at the table, I'm going to uh, put a little dollop of Cool Whip. <laughs> And then I've got some caramel syrup to go on top. Oh, dessert, right? Just, I love vanilla flavored things, so this is perfect for me. Cream soda tastes like vanilla. So, anyway, Huey Lewis just retired from the music industry, an, an industry he's been in probably since he's a young boy. And he had to retire because his Meniere's has gotten so severe that he can't hear anymore. And so, you know, I'm hoping that through his absence from his livelihood, that he will help bring a lot of awareness to what Meniere's is. Technically, it is a destruction of your vestibular system. The vestibular system is what keeps your balance. And all the little cilia that's in your ear to keep you nice and straight are, are being disintegrated. And so through the years that you have this, you lose more and more and more of your balance. You, um, like today, I'm, I'm very off balance, but I know how to, I, I, it's funny, I was watching my other shows because we always review them and go through and say, what should we do next time? And I notice I sway. Every episode that we've done, I'm swaying or holding or leaning, and that's just because as the moment goes by, I am kind of compensating for whichever way I'm sort of falling. So it's it's a very difficult disease. You eventually lose your hearing. I mean, it's just, it's a devastating disease, but you know what? I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say this, if my Meniere's folks are watching, everybody's got stuff. And you just live with it the best you can, you navigate through and you worship the times that are good. So there you go. There you go. Words Alicia, to live by. We have Alicia watching. She says, hi guys, that looks delicious. Oh, this is, this is, Alicia, look at this. It's amazing. Oh my God. And then Emily says hi. Hello, Em. <laughs> Emily couldn't be in the kitchen today with me because she's actually babysitting for my other two little granddaughters. And grandson. And, and where is he? He's with oh, they go he downstairs. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, he's down. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm ready to plate up. I can't believe we're how many? We're about 40 minutes and I'm ready to plate. Okay? So I I'm gonna tell you a little again once once more about my little barbecue sauce here. Okay? So most people have ketchup and mustard in their homes. A lot of people have uh, brown sugar. Brown sugar is just white sugar with molasses. That's what brown sugar is. And I put a cup of ketchup, I put a quarter of a cup of mustard, and a quarter of a cup of packed 
brown sugar, light brown sugar. I like the light brown sugar, but actually you could, the dark brown sugar is just more molasses, so that might be even better. And so this is gonna go on top of my slider buns, okay? And there's there's your homemade, it took me less than five minutes to throw this together. I mean, Delicious. a couple of minutes to throw the barbecue sauce together, okay? So I've got my little, I've got a little pan right here, okay? And I am going to put my barbecue sauce on top of my slider buns, okay? And quick and easy, holy cow, what an easy recipe. And I'm gonna, well, I'll just do this. I'll just use my, okay, there we go. And my burgers are done, okay? Mm. They are done. They are done, man. Okay, if I can get one out, we'd be, there we go. Now look at that, okay, look at that fits perfectly into the little slider bun and there you've got your sliders okay elizabeth when i get these plated mm -hmm. would you please take a picture of the food that would be awesome okay barbecue sauce you can use it if you don't like barbecue sauce. i'm not i'm not a big barbecue sauce person but this combination is so good and it's mild and um because i don't like the smokiness of barbecue sauce but when i make my own i like it so, because, you know, you know what you like, you know what you like, you know what you'll eat. So this is what I eat. So here you go. Mm -hmm. Look at those. Okay. So now you put some of the leftover shredded cheese in your mac and cheese. Uh-huh. And what I would do to tie them back together even more, yeah. is I'd throw a slice of Elvita on top of the, oh, uh, <laughs> on top of the meatloaf <laughs> sliders. You can do that. You can absolutely do that. And a little more cheese. And yep. Yeah, tie the, family, tie the two together. Much. There's never too much cheese, guys. <clears throat> never too much cheese. <laughs> never too much cheese. I'm going to take this one right here. Oh, we got to do barbecue sauce. Okay. And then a slider. And then, where did my top go? I lost my top, really? Where'd it go? Right there. <laughs> it, it, it happens. <laughs> Don't you hate that? <clears throat> you lost your bun? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I'm only going to put six out for right now and save these for later for the rest of the family. Alicia said ginger said yummy. Oh, yeah. They are ginger, <laughs> my honey. Okay. Look at these. Okay, we're going to do one more. Turn that down. Okay. Awesome, 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 delicious. And there we go. And if you remember, I used a, an ice cream scoop, a small ice cream scoop, which gives you a perfect size slider. Okay, Elizabeth, I'm gonna put these right here. Mm -hmm. And if you can go ahead and take a picture of that, that would be great. Try not to get all the other stuff in there. Okay, this is gonna be on simmer. Okay, and I am going to clean this up. Clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. By the end of my meal, you should have one one or less dishwasher load, okay? Very simple. Okay, so I'm gonna let those sit there. I'll, I'll put this on the table so that if anybody wants to- You can always to dip a little more can. sauce, you bet. Okay, and now I'm gonna make a plate. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna take one of the sliders right here. Look at that. You can put lettuce, onion, tomatoes, whatever you want on this. I like it, meatloaf, bread, sauce done for me okay i'm going to turn my corn down i'm going to oh they smell good oh okay. those are juicy and sweet they are and so juicy so sweet very tasty just a little bit of salt i did put salt in here but it was just basically to salt the water but because i don't like super salt and can't have it but it's just it, the way i do it is salty enough but you've got sweet and you've got buttery already built in, okay? And then, haha, <laughs> what I've been waiting for is, I'm going to turn this down to a simmer. And look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, and some of the pieces on the bottom have a little of the crusty stuff that I love. A little caramelization oh, 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 there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. I'm going to put a tiny bit of pepper on the top of my macaroni. What do you think, that guys? looks great. Melissa, I'm going to have you take a picture of this at the table. 
And then while Elizabeth's taking a picture of that, I made lemonade for today because it just seemed like a lemonade kind of a meal to me. And if you look at the cup that I have, I put, just like you would have a margarita, Now I don't drink margaritas, but of course I've seen them. And so I took my lemon and I just wrapped it around the cup like that and dipped it in sugar. Where are you? There you are. And dipped it in the top of the cup in sugar. You can show what I did so for you guys too, right over here. Okay. And so delicious. You taste the sugar and ooh, it makes it really, really good. And what did I come over here for? Nothing. Come on over here. So what do you think about that? Now let's go ahead. You're gonna make some cake up here? I am gonna make cake in a minute. First I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna try this. Vicky says she's getting hungry and she's know what she's making for lunch after this. <laughs> <laughs> well good, I'm glad. Okay, so how easy was this? We're we're less than forty five minutes and we're done with everything. And this is a great meal, but I gotta I gotta dive into the macaroni and cheese. Give it a little taste. Holy cow, this is my favorite. Thank you again, Jessica, for your fabulous recipe. Spot on. So good. Oh my gosh. And this is the first thing I've eaten today, so it's just like <laughs> okay. I'm gonna cut my little slider here. Because I want you to see the inside, okay? Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, look. Okay. It looks great. Now, I would, what I like, even even with this, is some mayonnaise. If, you, if you're a mayo lover like I am, put a little mayonnaise on this, too. Or, put a little cup of mayo and dip, 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 okay? My daughter Emily would probably dip into ranch. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what a way to have meatloaf, okay? So mm -hmm. easy, so delicious, tender, moist, it's great. Again, use that, you know the electric skillet that I talk about? I use, I do everything there. That's delicious. Taste that. <laughs> Here, Elizabeth. I make this all the time for my kids. We'll just do it. Oh my gosh. Let me get a plate for my dessert. Mm -hmm. Okay, what'd you think, girl? It's very good. Now, delicious! Woohoo! Oh, I get happy when things turn out beautifully. I'm so excited that you guys are joining me all the time. It's really, it's really nice. It's awesome. <clears throat> so we've gone from like when we started out, we've had like 300, 500, 700, 1200. Mm -hmm. 1400 1600 plus so I mean how exciting is that how exciting is that trust me we're thrilled about it all right so and we want the 1600 of you to tell each one of your friends please so we can get the please. six figure viewing now, you know and visit we're, our we're not making any YouTube of page no nope. this is just we're doing it because People out there need not be fed up. Come to fed up, fast, easy, and delicious. Come to fed up, and we will make life in the kitchen so much easier for you. Okay, look at this, how beautiful and tender this cake is. I'm gonna put that under there. Look at that, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put one dollop, maybe two. Yeah, two sounds better. <laughs> okay. That's just plain old Cool Whip. And Cool Whip's one of those things that, uh, you know, it just doesn't really count if you're a calorie watcher or... And look at yeah, that. That, oh, <laughs> look that at looks that. delicious. Little caramel sauce. Yes, mm -hmm. you're right. If you're a calorie counter, you could get, you could get low fat Cool yeah. Whip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's my dessert. Oh, I was going to tell you, the corn on the cob, I, I had, when I was a kid, I would eat the rows of corn. I would dig the corn out and I would literally, there wasn't a kernel left on the cob and it, because you eat row by row. Now, a little older, <laughs> a little more challenged, I cut the, the, the kernels right off. I don't know if I can do with this knife, but yeah, like, just like that. And that's how I eat it. Mm -hmm. so. Do okay, let's try this dessert because holy cow! Wow, that looks so good. Okay, 
caramel sauce Cool Whip on our on our vanilla uh, um, cream soda cake. That's delicious. If it's yeah. as good as it sounds, oh, it's gonna be wonderful. No, it, it's absolutely delicious. The cake is super, super moist, and you, uh, yeah, it, it's a great two-item, two-ingredient cake. That's awesome. I'm gonna leave this here with you guys. You can try. Thanks. It later, okay. <laughs> All right. So here we are with our meatloaf sliders. We've got the macaroni and cheese. Thank you, Jessica. We've got corn on the cob. My little lemonade, homemade barbecue sauce, and a cake, all in 45 minutes. So this is this is what this is all about. So thank you for joining me at my cooking nook, and we are. Don't you be fed up. Come to fed up fast, easy, and delicious. Have a wonderful, delicious day. Bye bye, everybody.